Good evening, everyone, and welcome to this big game tonight here on FAU Owl Radio and the YouTube live stream between the Miami Hurricanes and your FAU Owls. FAU coming into the game at 10 and 8, Miami at 9 and 7, and this is going to be a big game for the FAU Owls. FAU just dropped two out of three to USF, and they lost to Miami a few weeks ago, 11 to 2 on the road. So this is going to be a big rebound game, CJ. And I'm joined here with CJ Yuri, by the way. Uh, how do you think this game is going to go? What are you looking to see from this Owls team tonight? Well, this is definitely my favorite game of the year. Uh, ever since my freshman year, I've been coming to this game. Uh, I always think that they would split with Miami, or, or at least take one game. So I'm expecting to win tonight. I think Russ, I think uh, likely not the outing that we had in Miami. Uh, that game is a bit tough, tough to watch. So I'm hoping tonight that the pitching can figure it out uh, and figure it out early and keep our boys from uh, giving up two more runs. And I hope that at the beginning of this game, we get the bats going. Absolutely. And TJ Stewart on the mound tonight for FAU. He pitched against UF in that win uh, earlier in the season. He also pitched against Miami, I believe, in that other start. Uh, so he seems to be a big game pitcher for FAU as Stewart deals to the first batter, Jordan Lala. And it's a base hit up the middle on the first pitch. So Jordan Lala leads it off for Miami and it's going to bring up Anthony VR hitting 303. So Anthony VR stepping in, hitting 303 with three home runs, 13 RBIs, with a 370 on base. BJ Murray playing in at third base off the bag, as he'll foul that back over the stand zone one. As we have the mascot Owsley waving hi to us as we uh, broadcast this game. Normal FAU defense out there today, third to first. You have BJ Murray, Wilfredo Alvarez, Sam Lowe, and Nolan Chanuel. Caleb Pendleton DHing tonight with Nicholas Tony behind the plate. Left to right, you have Nick, uh, Mitch Hardigan, Jackson Wenstrom, and Bobby Morganson playing the field once again. So the count 0-1 to Anthony VR. And CJ, the, this two through six uh, in the lineup for Miami, they can all rake 14, 15 RBIs each, and uh, this is the part of the lineup you got to get through. Definitely very scary to get the first guy on on one pitch. Uh, gotta get out of this here. Can't go down early to these guys. They'll just pile it on. And as we know, FAU's bats go cold randomly, so it can't be one of those nights. We're definitely going to need to put out offensively. So the runner was trying to go, but he goes back as the R swings and misses at strike three for the first out of the top of the first. Yohandi Morales will step in, the third baseman, in 288 with three homers and 15 RBIs. Really and, nice bounce back there with a strikeout. Yeah, no, that was a nice pitch, too, and it was a breaking pitch, changing the look up. And, you know, if you're Stewart, you're not a guy that throws too hard. you got to locate really well as he deals for a strike there. It's all about location at the end of the day. And it's interesting, too, FAU going with Caleb Pendleton tonight at DH instead of catching behind the plate. As the umpire, I believe he just ruled a balk. So the runner will advance to second base. And you don't want to see that. So the count 0-1, one out, top of the first. Miami Hurricanes against the FAU Owls. And the 0-1 is upstairs. It looked like a curveball there. And Stewart's a guy. He's eaten up innings for us this year. He's a guy that, again, he's just got to locate, get the ball on the ground. With that velocity, you can't really leave anything up in the strike zone as that breaking pitch is swung on and missed, one and two. Yeah, they definitely seem to rely on Stewart in these big games. He's a mature guy, grad transfer from, uh, I believe, Manhattan. Um, he's, he's rock solid at times, I must say, even when he's rattled. Yeah, like his, his stat line this year, you know, 13.50s. That's up and away on the fastball, two and two. Fans have a problem with that one. Uh, but 13.50 ERA, a little bit misleading because, like you said, he pitches well in big games sometimes, I mean, especially against UF uh, earlier in the season. So 
open for that outing tonight. The 2-2, swing and a miss on the curveball. Big looper, and he gets him swinging. Back-to-back -back strikeouts there for Stewart. Hopefully he picks up steam. Yeah, and that curveball's got some nice break on it tonight. So Adrian Del Castillo steps in here, cleaning up and catching tonight, hitting 311 with three homers and 13 RBIs. On base of 394, a left-handed hitting catcher. Miami wearing their orange uniforms tonight. FAU wearing their navy blues as that's grounded to third and booted by Murray. And he won't have time to throw it on to first, so that's going to be an E5 for B.J. Murray, and it's going to be runners on the corners now with two outs. It's definitely very unfortunate. Bad break there. We had to ground out. Now there's a runner in scoring position at third base. Yeah, that's an out you just got to make. Um, and now we have a second cut, Del Castillo, stepping up here. So first it's Adrian, and now we have another one. So he's a senior, center fielder hitting 322. No homers, 16 RBIs, though. He leads the team in ribbies, and he has a 403 on base. Left-handed hitter as well. So runners on the corners, two outs here in the top of the first, and that pitch is taken just a bit outside, 1-0. But to your point about making that play at third base, uh, that's just a play that's got to be made. You know, you'd be out of the inning right now. And also, you know, think about it this way. If that balk hadn't happened, he wouldn't be at third base either. So two blunders. Hopefully FAU can get out of the jam here. As that 1-0 is a high heater there, 2-0. Oh. Count 2-0 oh now. Stewart with the pitch. And Stewart is 3-0 oh now, so another pitch, and it could be bases loaded. Runners on the corners, two outs. The 3 0 from Stewart to Del Castillo. And that's in there for a strike. So Stewart able to get one over there. Just got to hope that control stays the way it's been this whole inning. You can't let this at bat get away from you. And it does there. So ball four low and in. And it's going to be bases loaded, two outs for Alex Terrell, a junior, hitting 220 with a home run and four RBIs, 400 on base percentage. Well, I guess in that situation, it's a bit better to walk than sacrifice a hit. Hopefully you can strike out here or ground it, pop out. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, if you're, you're, you know, if you're in a 3-1 count, it's a hitter's count, hitter knows something's coming, it might be better to just walk him. Alex Terrell, a big guy here. And that pitch low and in, breaking ball. Terrell is six foot one, 235 pounds. And that ball is lined into right center field. Back going Wenstrom. And that ball is gone. It's a grand slam for Alex Terrell. And Miami takes a quick 4 nothing lead. And just like that, what did we say at the beginning of the game? Yeah. Can't go down the road. And that is a huge way to go down a road. Yeah, I mean, has to be low now. Yeah, I mean, especially because, and we've talked about this, you know, privately, but, um, you know, you lose a game 11 to 2 to Miami a few weeks ago. And ever since then, FAU has not been playing the same. They lost two out of three to Indiana State, they lost two out of three to USF. And that confidence level just has not come back for this team. And it's certainly showing here so far. Well, last time I was here, I was saying, you know, once you get ranked, that's great. You're ranked, but you need to now realize that everybody's going to come into your house. And everyone's going to, even when you're on the road, if you're ranked, everybody wants to beat you. Everybody wants to increase their resume. And as long as you have two numbers in front of your name, you're going to increase your resume uh, if you beat a team like that. And FAU needed to play not down to their opponent, but like they're ranked. And that just 
did not happen. Ever since I got ranked up to number 20, I slipped big time. The pitch to Gill is swung on a miss, strike three. That'll end the inning, but not before Miami puts on four with a grand slam by Terrell. We're going to the bottom of the first inning. We'll be right back here on FAUL Radio and YouTube. We are back here in the bottom of the first inning here at FAU Baseball Stadium. FAU down early, 4 to nothing, And we're going to give the FAU lineup real quick. As always, Wilfredo Alvarez leading it off here playing shortstop. Caleb Pendleton in the two-hole today, DHing. Nolan Shanuel batting third and playing first base, cleaning up and playing right field, Bobby Morganson. Mitch Hardigan will bat fifth and play left, batting sixth and catching Nicholas Tony. B.J. Murray will play uh, third base and bat seventh. Batting eighth and playing second base, Sam Lowe and Jackson Wenstrom will bat ninth and play center field on the mound. For Miami is a right-handed pitcher, freshman Jake Garland, two and one with a 4.22 ERA this season. The count now one and two uh, to Wilfredo Alvarez. Excuse me, one and one. It's my bad. Uh, two games started. This is his third game start. He's also had five appearances total, um, 21 in the third innings total as Alvarez fouls that ball off. Alvarez this year hitting 333 with a home run, seven RBIs, and a 432 on base percentage. And this is a guy, hits to all fields, takes every pitch where it's pitched, and he hits it where it is. He's never trying to pull the ball if it's not a pitch to pull. He's never trying to go the other way if it's pitched you don't do that with. Just a pure hitter as he takes the ball outside high heat. Yeah, he's been great at the leadoff. Uh, I can't even tell you the amount of times he's gone up to the plate to start the game and get a hit and get a soft goal. So we need something here. We cannot shrink uh, down 4-0. Got to rise up to the occasion and get some runs back here. <laughs> it is interesting, though, that Pendleton's now at hitting two, right, tonight? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, B.J. Murray... You know, he, he was hitting over 300 last time we were here, and now he's hitting 254. Um, so you're certainly, I mean, it's not just you're locked into that lineup spot. If you're performing, you know, or I should say if you're not performing, you can't be up in the lineup. Full count pitch is chopped to short. The shortstop, Patelli, will throw on the first in time for the first out of the inning, and that'll bring up Caleb Pendleton. Raise his batting average all the way up to 294. Hitting, uh, he has four home runs, 12 RBIs, and a 368 on base percentage. Mr. ESPN, Mr. MLB Network, Caleb Pennington. Bases aren't loaded, so. <laughs> yeah, well, hey, two of those home runs, eight of those RBIs from that night. Not familiar territory for him. Usually walks up. Nice. <laughs> And he takes another strike right down the middle, 0-2. So Jake Garland is six foot five, 230 pounds, and he's a freshman at six foot five. And he's throwing high heat so far. The 0-2 fouled straight back. 
he was on that though. Just under it. And again, you know, this offense. What were you about to say? No, sorry, sorry. Go ahead. Uh, you know, as an offense, you know, you, you can't be thinking, okay, we're down four. We got to try and score all four right here. It's Pendleton swings and misses at a breaking pitch outside the strike zone for the second out. But you can't be going up there thinking, I got to be the guy. Chip away. You have eight inning, eight innings plus an out left. You get a run per inning. You stop them on all, on, on the pitching side. Suddenly, you're right back in this game. Absolutely. I was about to say that I'm going to be extremely frustrated if we just start looking at pitches so that are right down the pipe. But uh, that one we chased. And Shaney will going with a bunt on the first pitch as there was no one on the left side of the infield. And, uh, you know, hey, it's it's nice, you know, trying to beat the shift. Well, he was unbelievably close. That was really, really close to being that, that, that bunt was actually picking up speed, too. Uh, that would have been a tough play for the shortstop or third baseman over there right now. Yeah, it looks like the third baseman playing shortstop position right now as that ball is lined in the parking lot 0 2. So, yeah, there's three infielders on the right side. And they always show every team that FAE's played, they've been shifting Shanny Wool, but it doesn't matter because he's still hitting 329, four home runs, leads the team by far in RBIs with 23, and that on base percentage at 400. And that's ball chop, uh, chop fell. Tell you what, I will never poke my car close to that fence. You are asking for your car to get destroyed. It's about like 40 heaters that go over there every game. And that 0-2 in the dirt. No, yeah, I mean, I've told the story. I mean, Noah Goldberg used to come here, announce games for FAUL Radio. Windshield smashed in, parked his parking lot, too, uh, car too close into the parking lot, and uh, just smashed in. 1-2 one, two, driven out in the center field, and that ball dies, and he makes the catch. What a play by the center fielder, Del Castillo, ran about 30 feet and dives in the left center field gap to make the play and end the inning. Wow. Unreal catch. Tip of the cap for that. That might be a Sports Center bad. top ten play right there. That was gorgeous, and that ball was picking up speed. That that came out there. That was a cold rope. Great catch. Unreal. So that'll end the bottom half of the first inning here on FAUL Radio. We'll be right back for the top half of the second. Yeah, dude. And that ball is lined for a base hit. First pitch of the inning by Gabe Rivera, the right fielder. And just like that, Miami on base. We absolutely need this inning. That's a tough one. we got to get out of here with zero runs. Can't give up anymore. Definitely don't need to be overly critical of the team. Uh, but I do think that when morale is low, it is low. And it's unfortunately contagious in that dugout, I do feel like we get down on ourselves pretty easy. Yeah, I mean, you just, again, you just got to regroup, realize it's a long game, 
And it uh, looks like there's already movement in that FAU bullpen. You see the shadow out there. Stewart deals, pitching the dirt, 2-0. At least it's a nice night. 75 out. Barely any clouds. Yeah, it's a beautiful night, and it's just starting to get past that chilly stage and back into that summer weather. And something's going on here. As David Kopp, the FAU pitching coach, going out to the mound and the trainer as well, might be an issue with TJ Stewart, and that's why we might be seeing that bullpen movement. And, uh, you know, we don't want to speculate, but uh, he did point to his elbow. It could be something along those lines. And, yep, FAU looks like they're waiting for the bullpen. And we're going to take a quick break here as FAU makes a pitching change. We wish the best to TJ Stewart. We'll be right back. All right, we are back here on FAUL Radio. Adrian Reese in the game, taking over for TJ Stewart. Just exited the game with an apparent injury, and that pitch hits Dante Batelli. And now it's runners on first and second with nobody out. 4 nothing Miami here in the top of the second. And that'll flip the order back over for Jordan Mala, who's one for one with a base hit tonight. Not good. Not good. You look like you're scared right now. Gotta wake up. Last time out to start off the game on the first pitch. So Reese 
Reese certainly had to work out the stretch now to earn being in four positions. So Adrian Reese this year, he's had his outings where he's up, and he's had his outings where he's down. And it's really a hit or miss with him. It's either you get, and it's the same thing with Hunter Cooley. It's either you get them at prime quality, or they're gonna they're gonna struggle. And hopefully tonight he can work out of this jam. First and second, nobody out. And that is grounded up the middle for a base hit. Rounding third and coming home is Rivera. Oh, it's five nothing, and now. That throw goes past Murray at third base. Patelli will score, and Miami takes a 6-0 lead here in the top of the second. Well, it's not the adding that we wanted from Reese to start. Two batters, two runs, hit by pitch. And for Lala, that's he's seen two fastballs right down the middle, two, both base hits right up the middle. Yep. I will say the sky's the limit for FAU baseball and the program this year. I think we have the hitters. The pitching is severely lacking. That one is over his head. All over the place right now, unfortunately. Hopefully we pick it up. Long game. So now runner on third here. Nobody out, and Anthony VR back up at the plate. Tonight he is 0-for-1 with a strikeout, and that pitch in the dirt. Runner coming home, throw to home plate is not in time. He doesn't even offer a wild pitch, scores a run, and the Hurricanes take a 7 nothing lead here in the second. And, uh, you know, this is just – not what you want, obviously. I mean, you know, you, you come into this game thinking that you want revenge, and now you find yourself down seven, nobody out, and the top of the second. I mean, they've done this with three outs to play with as another pitch is in the dirt. And, you know, can you really blame Adrian Reese? He's never had to come into a game in the second inning. He barely had any time to warm up, and I'm sure there's more people warming up in the FAU bullpen, but this is a guy that's used to coming in a lot later. Uh in the game, and he has time to warm up tonight. He just didn't have that time, and deals a strike in there. It's three and one. Just tough for FAU right now. Three one, and that's lined to first base and through Shanuel's legs. Probably going to be an E three. VR will stop at first, and. That is error number three for FAU. These are routine outs. Uh, P.J. Murray fumble over there, uh, or I should say error at third base, led to a grand slam. Now this would have been picking up for Reese and maybe a little bit of a confidence booster to get a guy out on a grounder. Squeaks right through your legs. Bill Buckner. Yeah, that was a Bill Buckner play. There you go. I know some baseball. <laughs> Count 0-1-1-2. Yohandi Morales. He's also over one with a strikeout. Swing and a miss, strike one. Excuse me, strike two. It's a good strikeout here. I feel the comeback. I don't know about you. Hey, it could happen. I mean, again, I mean, last year, and that's a base hit to left field by. <laughs> <laughs> by Yohandi Morales. Runners on first and second. Nobody out. 7 nothing Miami. Mm. At least we're having a good time. And uh, got my friend Michael here sitting next to me. He's absolutely right. He's saying, 0-2, you cannot leave a pitch at that part of the strike zone. You just can't, period. And uh, Adrian Del Castillo up at the plate now. So the count 0 and 1. Runners on first and second, nobody out. Top of the second, 7 nothing. Hurricanes over the FAU Owls. The pitch from Reese. Swing and a miss, 0 2. So, two nice fastballs there up in the strike zone. Oh, 
first inning. And here, if I'm Reese, low and away, or go with that exact same pitch. Nothing out over the middle of the plate. The 0-2. And another pitch left right in the middle of the plate. Base hit grounded up the middle. A run scores. And it's 8 nothing Miami. <laughs> So, how about this? Connect, correct me if I'm wrong here, but on that play, there was an opportunity to get the guy who overran second, but Wilfredo was just standing there. Is there somebody should be covering second base, right? Theoretically, I mean, you know, there's also the shortstop also plays the cutoff position for a throw to home plate. Um, he certainly could have been closer to second base, though. You're right. Mason Reese, Reese popped up and was ready to throw that guy out, which would have been a big out for us. Nobody was there. And Christian Del Castillo, check swing, called a strike on one. And again, my baseball IQ is definitely the lowest uh, in this in this row. But somebody's got to be there to make a play. Runs on first and second, nobody out, and that ball is chopped to Reese. It's over in Murray, and he boots it. And you know, listen, that's probably not an error. Uh, B.J. Murray had to come up on that ball, run for it. He tried to get it with his glove, and on the transfer, he lost it. So it is ruled a hit on the scoreboard, but now it's bases loaded, no outs. 8 nothing Miami. And this is just, at this point, it's almost inconceivable. You know, you maybe you go into this game thinking Miami, maybe, you know, they're the better team, obviously. You're not expecting 8 nothing without an out recorded in the top of the second inning. Well, I've seen about four routine outs that we've just completely botched. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, there's four outs tonight. You can erase the four runs that we gave up in the first inning if we made a routine out grounder to third base. Yeah. The 0-1. And that ball is looped into left field for a base hit. One run scores. Second run coming around home. It's a two-run single for Alex Terrell, who had the Grand Slam earlier. Actually, that was not Alex Terrell. That was uh, that was Raymond Gill. Excuse Actually, I'm sorry, guys. That was Alex Terrell. Two-run single, 10-0 Hurricanes. And now John McCormick coming out to make a pitching change. We'll be right back here on FAUL Radio. Alex, I'm almost starting to wonder if these are
it's just it's a can. And we're back, ten nothing, Miami here in the top of the second. Nobody out. Runners on the corners for Gabe Rivera at the plate now. It's uh, Raymond Gill. Raymond Gill is 0 for 1 today with a strikeout, and that pitch is taken on the outside corner 0 1. So Jackson Spiller on the mound tonight for, or not on the mound tonight, but he's in for the game, uh, hopefully for a few innings. Uh, Jackson Spiller's a guy, he can eat up a few innings. He's been used as a starting pitcher this year, he's been used to replace Jacob Josie. Uh, when he's gotten injured, and uh, he's been very effective as well. As that pitch is skied out in the right field, Morganson will take a look as it floats in to foul territory in right field. Well, the good thing is we're about to witness one of the greatest comebacks in FAU sports history. Hey, that would be pretty incredible. Keeping the positivity. It's coming. If they can do it, we can, right? Hey, yeah. Got to keep those spirits up. The 0-2, and that pitch is in the dirt. And a nice block by Nicholas Tony there. Yeah, I was about to say that. That was a great block because uh, that easily could have squeaked right by him, and that would have been 11-0. And if you're Spiller now, I get it. It's 10 nothing. You're looking to save every run possible, but you, you want to sacrifice the run and get that ball on the ground and get two outs here. Obviously, strikeout, pop outs, what you want, but um, – Double play would be nice as well, just to clear those base paths. So the count one and two, Spiller to uh, Gill. And the one-two comes in. Pitches high and away, two and two on the fastball. So Miami, they've done a great job tonight. They have, uh, they've been swinging at strikes, and uh, we were talking about it in between the inning. You know, these FAU pitchers, they're getting to these 0-2 counts, and it feels almost as if they're pressing and they're not being aggressive on 0-2 counts. That pitch taken just outside three and two. Um, but if you're an FAU pitcher, you got to pitch smart. And when you get 0-2, you can't be leaving pitches out over the middle of the strike zone because that's the pitches. You know, a top 25 program here, they're going to be swinging. And the full count pitch. Grounded fair to third. It'll get past Murray for a base hit. One run scores. Runner advances to third. And Gill will get to second. It'll be an RBI double for him. And it is 11 0 Miami here in the top of the second. I guess this is technically my fifth year being an FAU baseball fan. Now that I'm out of school and I'm an alumni, and I will tell you this might be the worst inning I've seen us, uh, I guess, worst inning of luck, too. Yeah. I do think that we had strike three there, and it was not called, but that's what it is. Yeah, absolutely. I agree with you. I mean, you know, it's a pretty bad inning. You had balls that could have been fielded, but it is what it is. They got to deal with it now. As that pitch is in the dirt, gets away from Tony. Luckily, it didn't get behind him, and the runner couldn't come home from third. So now it's runner on second and third. Nobody out. 11 nothing Hurricanes. In the top of the second, not even an out yet. They have nine hits. Some of these pitchers are, are fully, like they, they barely cross the, uh, from the, the line of the grass and the dirt in front of the, the home plate. Some of these pitchers are just all over the place. That ball skied in the center field. Jackson Wenstrom going into right center, but Morganson's the one that's going to get under it. Runner tagging from third, but Morganson's going to throw to third. He'll be safe, but the runner scores from third to home. It's a sack fly for Gabe Rivera, and it is now 12 0 Miami. It's the little things. We got now. So Dominic Patelli coming up here for Miami. He is 0 for 0 because he got hit by a pitch by Adrian Reese. It's been an eight-run inning for Miami thus far as he fouls that the other way. Left side 0 and 1. Patelli is a left-handed hitter. And on the season hitting 189 with an RBI. 
and this is his 13th game started. And fouled away again, 0-2. Nice curveball there. And at the very least, uh, Spiller can provide some sp uh, stability for this pitching staff tonight. FAU having their first conference play this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. You want those pitchers to be fresh. And at this point, obviously, you want to battle back, score as many runs as you can, get back in this game. But at the same time, you want to preserve those pitchers because you don't want to go into your first conference play with a with a depleted bullpen. The one-two pitch is taken for strike three. Nice fastball there from Jackson Spiller. And it is now two outs here in the top of the second. We'll flip the order up again for Jordan Lala. He's two for two. And Lala had that RBI single in his last at-bat. Jackson Spiller said two packing, striking out two. And again, you know, uh, FAU, it's 12-0. We're not going to sit here and act like this game is, is, is within reach. I mean, it's obviously baseball. It can happen, but... FAU, you could be looking for positives tonight. Put up some runs. You know, put up a five spot, a six spot, a seven spot. Make it competitive at least. Make them use their pitchers just to gain that confidence back. Yeah, I mean, there is a ton of baseball left. And if they can score 12, uh, we can also. So I guess, you know, for FAU, get the bats going. Start scoring some runs. Maybe the pitcher staff will get. Uh, a little confident with some run support, and you know we can make something happen. But maybe at the very least, make this game interesting so that you show yourself you can do it uh, ahead of the weekend. Yeah, any anything to build confidence is what this team needs. It's the count now one and two after that ball was chopped foul, and now curveball up and away two and two. And Jordan Walla, really solid hitter in here. Average might not show it, but he's a speedy guy as well. Five for seven in steals this year. So you don't want to get him on base. And he's been on twice tonight. Lights just turned on here at FAU Baseball Stadium on this beautiful night for baseball. Perfect breeze. The 2-2 comes in, and check swing, called strike three, and that'll get FAU out of the inning. But not before Miami scores another eight runs. It is 12-0 Miami as we head to the bottom of the second. We'll be right back. We are back here for the bottom of the second inning. 12 0 Miami Hurricanes as FAU hasn't batted through the lineup yet. Some Miami hitters tonight have had three at bats. So Bobby Morganson, one of the better FAU hitters. The average not showing it, but doesn't matter. This guy can absolutely rake. He's a senior for FAU, left handed batter as he takes a strike. Uh, batting 216, four home runs, 12 RBIs, 344 on base. And I think another factor here uh, is that he was injured for a period of time there. Um, may have slowed down his abilities as he grounds that into the shift. And that ball is booted. And that might be a little break there for FAU. That'll be an error on the shortstop, Patelli. 
And FAU gets a runner on. Oh, comeback starts now. And there's, there's your break. Uh, UM had all sorts of breaks from us. Errors left and right. Nice to see us get a lucky break here. And Mitch Hardigan steps up here, batting 319 with a home run, 11 RBIs, 355 on base. And he's very solid hitter. Takes a pitch outside. Hardigan's a guy. He'll take his walks, hits the ball hard to all fields as well, never trying to jack it out of the ballpark. Another guy that just goes to all fields. Pitcher Jake Garland deals on the 0-1. And that ball hit the opposite way. Uh, pass third baseman for a base hit. Rounding second going to third is Morganson. Hardigan to second with a double. Runners on second and third with nobody out for FAU. And things might be brewing here And as it brings up Nicholas Tony to the plate. There we go. And Hardigan did a nice job there getting a fastball on the inner half of the plate, not trying to pull it with three guys on the right side of the infield, rather going the opposite way. Third baseman playing off the bag was able to get it past him. Now suddenly runners on second and third for Nicholas Tony, hitting 200 with two home runs and seven RBIs on the season. And Tony gets hit up high with a pitch, and that might be what FAU needs here. As uh, ugly as that may sound, but you know now you got bases loaded, nobody out, and a big spot here for the struggling B.J. Murray. And we're used to him hitting in that two hole. Now he's dropped to that seven hole. He's, I think his average is up at 323 at one point. Now he's hitting 254, four home runs, 15 RBIs, but is on base still up there at 379. Always puts together a good at bat. Probably has more power from the left side than he does the right side. As he's hitting from the left side against the righty pitcher right now, takes a fastball low and in. And, you know, this might be a factor here for the pitcher Garland as well. He was sitting there for a good half hour. And sometimes as a pitcher, that arm gets cold, you get in your rhythm, and you're just sitting there waiting to come back, waiting to come back. And that control gets a little wonky as he deals a strike there. Huge at bat here. Keep it going. Base is loaded. Sun is setting. 1-1 one, one is strike to B.J. Murray. And another big factor here is, you know, Jake Garland is a freshman. He has a 4.22 ERA. And, you know, as a freshman against an FAU team that's been ranked in offense that can score runs over the course of the game, he might implode a little bit. So that 1-2 comes in. Pitch in the dirt, two and two, and Del Castillo had trouble looking for that one, but it doesn't matter. No run scored. And uh, Michael, my friend, sitting next to me, he actually faced uh, Garland in high school, so he knows how this guy pitches. Fastballs, uh, heavy, would you say he throws mid-90s or 90s at least? So, yeah, he's definitely a 90s mile-per-hour guy. He's that slider. Slider up high. Full count yes. here for BJ. Michael just said he loves his off speed, so it's a full count. Full count, nobody out. Bases loaded, bottom of the second. 12 0 Miami. FAU looking to dent that score a little bit here. The full count pitch is ball four. It's an RBI ball for BJ Murray. It's 16th RBI of the season. And FAU cuts in just a little bit. It's 12 to 1 as it brings up Sam Lowe. And Sam Lowe's a guy, he could be leading off on any team. He's hitting 316, a home run, seven RBIs, 400 on base. As looks like either Miami's hitting coach or, excuse me, not hitting coach, uh, pitching coach or manager is going out to talk with Garland. This is a huge inning right now. I mean, you've got one across. You still have bases loaded. There are zero outs. You would have to get as many through as you possibly can here. Let's say they could get all, all three of these guys around. That is huge. Absolutely. I mean, then you're looking at you got seven innings to come back. Sam Lowe, I mean, he's hitting 316, so... 
The assumption can be made is that he is a contact hitter. He very much is. Right-handed hitter. I think his approach here needs to be this guy's a little rattled. Oh, oh, oh man. man. Wow. And uh, for our radio listeners, that pitch was very high and in, almost hit him in the head. Yeah, I was about to say, let him uh, like walk, like take the first two pitches. Uh, I'm sure he'll start off with the ball, but I didn't think he would start off with a headshot almost. Oh. 1 0 down the middle, 1 and 1. But you're right, CJ. That, that's a good pitch to take. Jackson Wenstrom on deck for FAU. Sold out crowd here at FAU Baseball Stadium as low swings and misses at the breaking pitch, 1 and 2. Uh, and Sam was definitely swinging from the fences there. He almost swung out of his shoes, but it was a juicy pitch right there, so can't blame him. And he does have a grand slam this year as well, so he's got that experience with that. His only home run this year is a grand slam as he takes strike three, and that's a pitch you got to swing at. You know, you're down by 11 runs. You get a fastball, really, even if it's not in the strike zone or very close to it, you got to be swinging at something like that. So now Jackson Wenstrom steps in, left-handed batter, hitting 216. Yeah, see, that, that's just so frustrating there because what, what do you gain from looking at that pitch? If, even if it's close, even if it's a hitter, you think it's close, you're down 11 runs, and you have the bases loaded. There's just no benefit of, of even letting the umpire make that decision for you, even if you think it's close. Right. I mean, especially with two strikes, your approach is, is to stay in that at that and, you know, foul pitches off. Even if you don't think it's a pitch you can necessarily drive, get your bat on it. And again, like you said, don't let the umpire end the at bat for you as that pitch is fouled off 0 2 by Wenstrom. And I made a mistake there. He's hitting 203, not 216. Three homers, six RBIs. Tremendous defensive center fielder. And pitch down low, one and two. Bases loaded, one out, bottom of the second, 12 to one at Miami. It would be extremely deflating uh, to not get these guys around. Yeah, I mean, you got to, you know, you got to get at least one or two more in here. Wenstrom drives it in the center, but it's right at the center fielder. Tagging and scoring is Hardigan. It's a sack fly for Jackson Wenstrom, and it is now 12 to 2. And this FAU crowd, they got a little bit of extra noise here tonight. Yeah, I mean, there's a ton of red and blue here. Uh, the FAU side by the dugout uh, on the lawn is absolutely packed. It was a sellout tonight for COVID season. Uh, I'm sure it would have been a sellout on a regular season as well. Yeah, I was talking to the campus store guy before I walked up here. He was saying that the, the store is doing really well here. They always drive up sales every game. Well, that's very good news. You need to get all the revenue you can get as Wilfredo Alvarez offers it a curveball there out of the strike zone in the dirt 0-1. Come on, really. And a strike. That was outside. Bad call there. Uh, if we could just get on base here, we have Caleb Pendleton, Mr. Grand Slam coming up. Hey. Yeah. That, could you imagine, man? Baseball is a crazy sport sometimes. The 0 2, curveball, nice job to fight off that pitch. You could tell, uh, kind of looked a little late on that. Got the bat on it. Count 0 2, two outs, runners on first and second, 12 to 2, Miami. The pitch to Alvarez is just low. 1 and 2, that's a dangerous take. Scary. Scary, scary, but we'll be fighting another day. Count one and two, and that pitch is in the dirt, two and two. Two runs on one and three. 
And FAU, they've gotten pressure on this pitcher, and they only have one hit. And they've been working the count, getting on base in other ways. And that's another pitch in the dirt, three and two. Wilfredo always puts together really good at bats. Full count here. Huge pitch. Alvarez tonight, 0 for 1. Looking to get a hit right here. Full count, two outs. The pitch. And that pitch is chopped to the first baseman. He'll step on the bag, and that'll end the inning. But FAU does start to chip away at this large lead by Miami. They score two runs in the inning. We'll be right back for the top of the third on FAU All Radio and YouTube. We're back here, top of the third, 12 to 2, Miami. Jackson Spiller pitched a strike to VR to lead off this inning. We want to thank you listening on FAUL Radio and the YouTube live stream here on the Strictly Sports Productions channel. And CJ and I, we do a podcast together right here on this channel. You can find it in the playlist section. Uh, we have Strictly Sports and four other podcasts as well, so go check those out. And that pitch is upstairs, one and two. It's going to be uh, three up, three down, inning, uh, top of the third here. Get down and start getting the bats going again. The one, two, outside. And VR tonight, 0 for 2. So one of the guys that has not gotten on base tonight for them. Actually, he did. He uh, actually he reached on an error in one of his at-bats. Um so the 2-2 coming in here from Spiller to VR. And that pitch is driven. Right field, Morganson looks up, and that ball is gone. Anthony VR with his fourth home run of the season, and Miami makes it 13-2. to well, the morale boost lasted for about 10 minutes, maybe. First batter up, goes down 0-2 on the count. Start getting a little wild. And he goes back to pitching it down the pipe, and it's destroyed out of the ballpark. And, and that's another example we've been talking about. Your, your 0-2 count, and you're pitching it right down the middle. You're not supposed to give hitters a, a, a pitch to hit like that on 0-2. You're just not supposed to. 0-1 grounded to Murray. Gets it with the webbing of his glove. Throws to first in time. 
for the first out of the inning. But for that offense, too, you know, you're getting that momentum, and then, boom, one more run, and it just puts you back down that hole even further. Great play by BJ there. Singling in the second inning, goes back to the dugout, as that'll bring up. So Adrian Del Castillo, one for two tonight. He scored two runs. He has an RBI in the game. And they're shifting Del Castillo as that pitch is low and away. Alvarez playing shortstop as normal. B.J. Murray on the right side of the infield, along with Sam Lowe and Nolan Chanuel, of course. And that pitch is in there 1-1. One -one. On the strike zone, strike number one. So Miami maintaining a 13 to 2 advantage over Florida Atlanta. Hurricanes swept by the Florida State Seminoles quickly rising in the national rankings as Miami drops to 18 in the rankings. Here's the 1 1. 1 and 1 is a curveball looped in there just upstairs, 2 and 1. I like that pitch, though. Yeah. Gives you something to think about plus the hitter. And the 2 1. Chops. Murray on the right side of the infield this time throws to first. So a nice job by him, you know, getting that different angle on the right side of the infield as opposed to third base. And he gets the routine out. So just overheard the Miami broadcaster. These Del Castillos are brothers. So Christian Del Castillo in here, he's one for one. He scored two runs and walked. And that pitch is loan in. So both lefties, both very similar uh, batting stances. One is a catcher and one's a center fielder. And the 1 0. And that pitch just upstairs. You could argue either way on that one. Count 2 0. That is in the gap in left center field. No one's going to get that one. It's going to drop right past Hardigan. Going to second is Del Castillo. It's a two out double. And it'll bring up Alex Terrell, who had the grand slam. Del Castillo reached first on an infield single and replicates that once again. Alex Terrell in here. He's two for two with a grand slam. Six RBIs tonight out of the 13, so almost half of their run production off of this guy's bat. And the pitch. Curveball looped in there, 0-1. Nice pitch, nice pitch. Let's get this guy out. And it's nice sometimes to start off backwards. You know, you're not always starting off fastball. Now you make a question as a hitter, when am I getting that fastball? Or am I getting it? The 1 curveball again, 0-2. He's got command of that curveball. We have to start locating the fastball and the changeup because that's what's been killing us. And that's the only reason why he let out the home run, and that's the only reason why there's a runner on second right now. The 0-2, fastball taken for strike three on the high and inside corner, and that'll end the inning. But they score a run, 13-2 Miami, and we're heading to the bottom of the third. We'll be right back. Good 
And we're back here, bottom of the third, 13 to two, Miami, as Caleb Pendleton steps in for the Owls. Garland is still on the mound. As Pendleton, high chopper to third, throw to first, and one pitch, one out to start the bottom of the third. And again, as a hitter, you know, no matter what the score is, whether you're blowing a team out, whether you're down, you, hitters never give up at bats. So again, make sure as hitters you're at least getting your work in tonight. Round out by Pendleton of FAU, the designated hitter. So here is Nolan Chanuel. He is 0 for 1 tonight, takes a ball high and away. Upstairs for ball number one. Being shifted once again, and he tried to bunt that first at bat, has not offered it that yet. And the 1 0 is a strike down the middle. And fouled by Shanuel. And the one two to Shanuel. And that pitch jammed him inside. Nice job to fight it off and get a piece of it. So the count remains one and two. There is movement in the FAU bullpen once again. And the one two comes in from Garland. Fouled off his ankle. Count remains one and two. Bobby Morganson on deck. Got a little lucky in his first at bat. Reached on an error. The one two. And that pitch is outside two and two. Ball number two. So count even at two and two on the freshman standing at 6'3, weighing in at a buck 95. Chanwell, 329 hitter on the 2021 season. Garland's 2 2 pitch. This foul is past the left. The third baseline, excuse me. 2 2 pitch fouled off again by Nolan Chanwell. And Miami leading. And Chanwell, he's a guy that's always going to put together good at bats. Takes his pitches, obviously, that on base percentage at 400. And that pitch is driven to right field. Back, and that ball's gone. A line drive home run for Nolan Shanuel. That's his fifth home run of the year. And it's now 13 to 3. Nolan Shanuel with his fifth home run of the year was able to take a fastball up high in the strike zone, and it was a line drive home run. Yeah, he bombed that one. Ball line up the middle for a base hit by Bobby Morganson. So a one out single there. What's that? I said the bats are getting going. Yeah. That's back to back innings where uh, everybody's starting to get a look at being on base. It's good to see. You know, just get that confidence going in the lineup at the very least tonight. Well, that's what I was saying at the beginning of the game. A lot of times our bats go cold and we'll, and we'll string together like six or seven guys where they just don't get on. And, and notice, early in the count, first pitch, I think the first or second pitch, base hit. That's what happens. Fair point. A lot of times when we're going cold, we are looking at the first and second pitch and immediately in a hole, and, and the pitchers able to just man manipulate us from there. Yep. Absolutely. The count 0 and 1 to Hardigan. And Hardigan dribbles at foul. 0 and 2. And, uh,. I know we're having uh, some people text me about some background voices, and uh, that's the Miami broadcast. Pretty nonstop action from them. 
Count 0 2 to Mitch Hardigan. Morganson on first base. And that pitch hit him. And yeah, no, I was looking at the second base umpire. It looked like maybe he was disputing that, but home plate umpire. Uh, ruled it a hit by a pitch, and so now runners on first and second, one out, and it will bring up Nicholas Tony. Well, again, I, I was about to freak out on the broadcast if that wasn't uh, if, if Mitch wasn't given a base there because I was so clearly he was hit by a pitch, and it looked like the first base guy was like, "No, get back." Tony's a big guy here. Let's uh, let's see if he, we can see some power. Next up is BJ. I kind of like this where BJ's hitting here. It kind of evens out the lineup. I, I totally agree. I mean, because this team. Oh, Tony drives it. Left field. And gone. A three run home run for Nicholas Tony. His third home run of the year. Fifth home run of the year. Excuse me. And FAU cuts the lead. It's 13 to 6. I was right. That is his third home run of the year. I'm looking at a bunch of stats right now. But, hey, FAU, man, they're battling back. Hey, what a, right when he walked up and said, Tony's a big guy. Let's see some power here. Boom. First pitch. Gone. CJ's calling stuff now. And you could feel the energy at this FAU stadium. The crowd is chirping. FAU players looking very energetic after that home run. So, B.J. Murray being shifted here. And a ball to Murray. So now you look at this game, forget it's 13 to 6, forget about the first three innings. It's a new game. And, you know, suddenly that lead, it's still daunting, but it's not as bad as Murray fouls that ball back one and one. And something to remember about Miami, too. You know, this team's nine and seven, right? I mean, FAU is 10 and eight. It's not like Miami's stellar by any means. They're always a respected program. They've been top 10 this year, but so far, they're not playing like the Miami team you would expect. So this team is more vulnerable than maybe they usually would be. Yeah, for sure. Uh, I would also say that they're definitely playing some pretty high-end competition uh, in the ACC. Has conference play started yet? For us, no. I'm sure Miami has them, had their share of it. Yeah, I believe that they've, they've had a couple series in the ACC so far. But, hey, uh, FAU is definitely a team that's streaky. And when they get hot, they're hot. you got to just stay hot right now. 2-2, two, two, and B.J. Murray takes a strike for strike three. And that's been his issue all season. Yeah, that, that's just a hurt. I thought that pitch was low. Unless I was looking at something you wanted. But, like you said, you can't be looking right now. If it's close, you swing. You're down by so much. So Sam Lowe steps up again. He's 0 for 1 tonight with a strikeout. You have to thank Coach McCormick because he's telling him in the dugout, we need to win every inning going forward. Just win it. And we may find ourselves back in this. Exactly. Exactly. Count now 1 and 1. You're winning this inning 4 to 1. Go out next. The most important thing after you have innings like this, the pitching staff cannot give up a run the following inning because it kills the momentum. Here's the 1-1 one, one pitch, too low. 1-1 one, one is outside. I don't know why, but every time that there looks to be a close ball or strike, the umpire seems to be looking right over the UM bench as if he needs some sort of approval. <laughs> Who knows, man? He might be paid off. 2-1 is fouled straight back. We're just joking, of course, everyone. We would never, ever say something like that. Jake Garland trying to get out of this inning. 2-6. Two and two, two outs. Bottom of the third, 13 to six Miami. FAU with a four spot in this inning as Sam Lowe takes a pitch high and in. It's a full count now to him. Keep this inning going. Full count pitch. Grounded to short. And Patelli throwing the first. Nice play routine. And that'll end the inning. But FAU, they did what you want. Nolan Shaniel, solo shot. Nicholas Tony, three run shot. Now it's 13 to six. We're going to the top of the fourth. We'll be right back.
We gotta go. Alrighty. We are back here. Uh, top of the fourth inning, 13 to 6 Miami. And a new pitcher on the mound for FAU. It's Bryson Allen, the junior left hander. And curious decision here. He has not been one of the more highly used pitchers for FAU this season. So he's going to have to show some stuff here today. Gill at the plate. And he kind of short arms it a little bit. Kind of that three quarters release uh, with that fastball. If you've ever seen, uh, I'm trying to think of a good comp, uh, comp in major leagues. Uh, Kind of like Trevor Bauer kind of wraps the ball behind his back with that wrist, kind of bends it over. Amen, whatever works for him. The 0-1 pops, soft contact into short left field, and Mitch Hardigan will get under it for the first out of the inning. That's the start you're looking for. That's the start we've actually been missing three straight innings. Yeah, and, and you know, it, it was a pitch that maybe he got away with because it was out over the plate, but the important thing is you got to get soft contact, and that was soft contact. That's what you want to see. Yep. So now Rivera at the plate, and that pitch is low and in. One for one tonight. He scored a run with an RBI. It was an RBI uh, sack fly. That's what it was. So the 1-0 inside. inside. Yeah, it was strike. They caught it one more. That pitch driven left center. Hardigan going back, and it's gone. A solo home run for Gabe Rivera. His second home run of the year. And just like that, Miami's back on the board. It's 14-6. to six. That's just so unbelievably frustrating. Yeah. So frustrating. We can't keep the ball in our own park. And I don't understand, really, the, the pitching decision here. Bryce Allen, not a guy who's uh, been put in a lot of big games, and now he's in a game where you're battling your way back. I, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. But it's 14-6. to six. And Dominic Patelli back at the plate. He is 0 for 1 with a run scored and a strikeout tonight. Takes a ball. And uh, it does look like he got lucky because, you know, that first pitch to Gill where he popped up, if he had been just a little bit more on time with that, that probably would have been a home run as well. And no movement in the FAU bullpen. So this is Allen's inning. One one driven into left field. Hardigan gets that one, two outs. So now Jordan Lala back up at the plate. I wish we were able to just keep those two solo shots on our own park. Yeah, imagine what a different game this would be. 12 6 looks a hell of a lot better than 14 to 6. Jordan Lala, two for three tonight with an RBI. Struck out as well. Lefty on lefty matchup here. Allen deals a strike. The 0 1. 0 and 2. And on this 0 and 2 count, the FAU infield actually starts shifting Lala. So that's interesting uh, that in the middle of the count, and a nice block by Tony there. Um, that they're shifting. Nobody on, but great block. He used that a couple times in the first few innings. <laughs> that's for sure. 1 2. And, that one and inside. One and two, two outs, top of the fourth, 14 to six Miami. I believe that was actually rolled a foul tip, so the count remains one and two with two gone. 14 to six lead for Miami. There's the one two. And that ball is grounded foul to the right side. Crosses over the right side and the first baseline, so the count remains one and two, and we'll do it again. 
Bala ranks second in the ACC in runs scored. Uh, so the scoreboard at FAU says the count is one and two, and our internet feed is saying two and two. So we'll see what it is here. And that pitch outside again. And the umpire, I think, is just correcting the uh, scoreboard here. Yep, it is a full count. So the uh, stat cast was correct. 3-2. And that ball is grounded into the shift. Shanuel will flip over to Allen. And he gets them by about a half a step. And I'm telling you, if there's replay, that might be one that's overturned. But, hey, FAU will take it, especially with the game looking like this. We're going to go to the bottom of the fourth, 14-6 Miami. We'll be right back. The original. And we're back for the bottom of the fourth inning. 14-6 to six Hurricanes over the Owls. Jackson Winstrom had a sack fly in his last at-bat. Garland still on the mound as Winstrom hits the opposite way. Shortstop on the knee. Throws to first in time for the first out of the inning. A nice play there by Patelli at shortstop, and it's going to bring up Wilfredo Alvarez. Well, I'll tell you, that guy's got a cannon shortstop. Absolutely. And, and, you know, you could tell, you know, offensively, hitting under 200, only one RBI on the season. He's played just as long as everyone else. He's in there for the defense. And Alvarez, whoa, takes a pitch inside. It looks like a ball, but it's own one. And uh, it almost looks like a cutter of some sort from Garland because that fastball cuts in at the very last minute, and that's a base hit up the middle for Alvarez. That's a chopper, so hit it really at the right place there. If that had been to the second baseman, obviously, that would have been out. Very softly hit ball. So Caleb Pendleton stepping up here. He's 0 for 2 tonight. And, you know, there's a quality as a hitter where, you know, you're down by this much, you want to be aggressive, but at the same time, you know, you don't want to be seeing one pitch outs. Um, so you, you want these at-bats to last for sure for multiple pitches as Pendleton fouls it away 0-1. Get down 0-1. Is Pendleton. As Caleb Pendleton, the catcher of Jensen Beach, Florida, went two for five against South Florida. Garland checks over at Alvarez at first. Here's the 0-1. one Ground to the shortstop to Telly. Flipped to second one. On to first. It's an inning ending double play for Miami. Nice play defensively by them. And that'll end the fourth inning. Very quick, bottom of the fourth. We're going to the top of the fifth here on FAU already on YouTube. We'll be right back.
And we're back on Owl Radio. I'm Jacob Brown, joined here with CJ Yuri as we broadcast this really the home game of the season for FAU as they get to host a program like Miami right before conference play begins. Marshall coming in on the weekend as that ball is driven into right field. Morganson dives and he makes the play. What a play by Bobby Morganson running to his right, diving, sprawling out, and making the play for the first out of the inning. We've seen that duo of Morganson once from out there make some aw awesome plays uh, in the outfield, and that's another one that you could put up there as a highlight reel. Those guys uh, definitely work their tail off out there to get to the ball. And Allen deals for a strike. How many times have you and I sat here and we're like, wow, they were moving and hustling to get there. So effort's never a problem out there, that's for sure. Count 0-1, foul tipped into the glove, 0-2. So Allen looking like maybe he's finding a little stride here. But, I mean, you know, Morgan said Wenstrom, tremendous outfield defenders. Same thing with Hardigan, of course. And even the guys that you got on the bench, Jalen DeBose, Victor Castillo. These are guys that know how to pick it out there in the outfield. Does that ball's pop foul. But uh, Steve Cashin coming in this weekend for the uh, Marshall series. We do the podcast, me, CJ, and Steve. And so he'll be here this weekend. And uh, CJ, we got to. We got to talk about NFL stuff this week, man. We got a lot of hot takes. Yep, there's a ton going on in the NFL. And guys like Colin Coward and all of them are just filling airtime, saying really <laughs> dumb stuff every day. So, but yeah, we're getting close to the NFL. Mock drafts are going to start flying. I made one the other night. I think it is a winner. So who'd you who'd you pick to win the whole March Madness? I picked ba the Baylor Bears, Bear down, but I had Iowa in my championship, so lost a ton of points. Oh man, man! If Adiel's listening to this, he's man. I'm glad actually that you did not tell I uh, Adiel that you picked Iowa because he would have blamed you a hundred percent for that. <laughs> Adiel, of course, and the team's fraudulent. He blew it with one of the best bigs in the last 10 years college basketball. Dropped. I think I think uh, Garza had 66, 67 points in two games. Unreal. Unreal. And Yohandi Morales in here. Pitch almost hit him there. Count of full, uh, full of three and two. Pitch pop foul. And uh, Michael, my friend next to me, he pointed out it's a seven pitch at bat, about to be eight. And, uh, you know, that's when as a pitcher, you know, you definitely have, and that pitch is uh, a little bit lower, would have been hitting us. But as a pitcher, you know, when you throw this many pitches, you kind of start to lose, like, hey, what do I do here? He hasn't struck out on anything I've thrown, he hasn't really had bad contact, he's on everything. What do I do here? And that pitch driven to left and a nice job to get out of that at bat as Hardigan will get it right before the dirt starts on the warning track. So now it's two outs here in the top of the fifth. And that's what you want here is pitching staff. Let that offense battle back from this deficit. Don't make Miami keep adding to that. That's where it starts to get more and more difficult as an offense. You talk about hitter. I mean, just, Valley got pitch after pitch. That was resembling his back-to-back -back home runs against NC State. Of course, that was a couple of minutes. And that pitch grounded, and Murray dives. Gets through him for a two-out base hit. So even through the shift, uh, Del Castillo, or Adrian Del Castillo at least, is able to get a hit. And now his brother, Christian Del Castillo, will get to come to the plate. Can't really blame PJ there. He laid out for that, but that ball was coming in hot. Through that gap. So Christian Del Castillo, two for two, two runs scored, a walk and a double tonight. Swing and a miss, strike one on a slider. 
Owen one. Owen one, two outs, top of the fifth, runner on first. 14 to six Hurricanes over the FAU Owls. I'm Jacob Brown, joined here with CJ Yuri. You're listening on FAULradio.com and the YouTube live stream on the Strictly Sports Productions YouTube channel. We want to thank everyone who's listening tonight. Count one and one to Christian Del Castillo. And the one one foul. And the count one and two, two outs. Pitch from Allen to Del Castillo. Foul. I was looking at that. I was going to hit the light post up there. One for four against the Owls in the 11 to 2 win a couple of weeks ago. Runner on first is Adrian Del Castillo. One, one two again. Jump, wow. And uh, that was a check swing bat. by Del Castillo. And it looks like it hit his bat on the check swing. Got lucky there. And the one two is served foul to the left side. Count one and two, two outs. Man on first. And the pitch. Slider popped up. In foul territory, third base side. Tony and Murray going for it. And Murray will make a basket catch in foul territory to end the inning. Nice job by FAU. Only inning so far without a run scored by Miami. Can FAU capitalize that on offense? We'll see. We'll be right back for the bottom of the fifth. We are back. 
here on FAUL Radio, bottom of the fifth, 14 to six. Nolan Shaney will just try to bunt against the shift again, but it was foul, and now he drives at center field. Del Castillo going back, and it's over his head. Shaney will round in first. He's going to second, and he's going to stop at second wisely as that cutoff throw was caught right as he touched second base. So it's a leadoff double for Nolan Shanuel, and it brings up Mitch Hardigan. Bobby Morganson, the right fielder, steps in. This is the guy you want at the plate. Again, average might not show it. He's one for two tonight. He scored two runs, but he's a senior. He knows how to take at bats. He's experienced. This is the guy you want at the plate right now. Absolutely. And he's got a ton of power to him. Hey, and Morganson drives it right center. And Del Castillo will get under it. Shanuel is going to tag from second to third. And, yeah, that is a great throw. My friend Michael said that. Uh, and Shanuel will tag to third. Uh, but, hey, now ground ball in the infield, unless the infield's playing in, which they won't, up by so many runs. Or sack fly can score a run here for FAU. Yeah, but you can't even be a sack fly at this point. you got to keep the, keep the inning going. No more outs. Uh, you're hoping that he gets on base as well as drops him in here. Yeah, I agree. I mean, you know, you're down by too many runs to be like, oh, yeah, we'll take a sack fly here. Yeah. But you're kind of past that point of a uh, sack fly is a win here. Not... Hardigan, liner to first. Uh, well, it's going to be a sacrifice, an RBI ground out for Mitch Hardigan. RBI number 12 on the season for him, and it's now 14 to 7. So now Nicholas Tony steps up. He had that three-run shot in his last at-bat. It's a well-hit ball, at least. It, wasn't it was. At all. He really got a hold of that. Over Are you talking about Hardigan? Uh, yeah, yeah. Hardigan. Yeah, I know it was. And fastball just a little bit outside. 1-0 to Nicholas Tony. Yeah, I mean, two outs or not. We got two guys right here that can definitely keep the inning going. I mean, Tony and Murray. And of course, uh, you know, it's not a sacrifice with a ground ball to uh, first base to get the uh, runner in. I was just making the point that uh, you had to sacrifice an out in general. So obviously it's not a sacrifice in the in the box score. And uh, that pitch is taken for a strike on the fastball one and two. Again, I, I don't understand what check swinging here or anything close is going to be. You're down by so much. Back on. And now, oh, wow. oh, I thought that was going to be a strike. That looked very good. Now looking at two and two here. Count two and two, bottom of the fifth. FAU's put up a run. Talk about winning, in, winning innings. Uh, FAU did win in the inning. It's a two-out single up the middle for Nicholas Tony. And two-out rally maybe here as Sam Lowe steps up. Excuse me, B.J. Murray first will step up to the plate. For sure. Like I said, these are two guys up here, Tony and BJ, that can really keep your inning going. They're great hitters, uh, especially when they're feeling it, they're feeling it. Tony seems like he's on every pitch tonight, uh, so that's a great guy to have. Get the bases loaded against that guy. He can go yard again. Jake Garland's starting debut in this midweek matchup. Mine is still in 14 to 7. BJ Murray. And that's a base hit to left field. Nicholas Tony rounding second. He's going to third. That ball's still in the corner in left field. Tony coming home. He will score. It's an RBI double for PJ Murray. And now it's 14 to 8. Unbelievable. Unbelievable hit. Great base running by Tony. Yes, it was. And uh, sorry, guys, I was just uh, distracted. I don't think we're on air on FAUL radio at the moment. Uh, some internet difficulties. But uh, huge there by FAU. Yeah, no, I don't think we're on now radio. Yeah. There's a waiting endpoint. Looks like the uh, something's happening on the radio end. Yeah. But what a hit. Yeah, absolutely. No, that was. Uh, that's what you want there with two outs. You know, you get a little simple base hit up the middle, and then you find yourself, hey, we got a runner in scoring position. And, uh, you know, there you go. So you get an RBI in here, 14 to 8 now. 
And now, you know, you got four innings, six runs, two runs an inning. They scored two runs this inning. They scored four runs a few innings ago. Let's see what they can do. And they're leaving Garland in. It's, I mean, hey, he's given up eight runs in four and two-thirds. They're probably leaving him in thinking we're up by a lot. We're playing this weekend. Don't want to waste our pen. What's the situation? Uh, yeah. you got a freshman up here in low, and at the same time, you are you have two outs. And it's not yeah. like the runner's on, on third either. So let him finish out the inning. I'm sure we'll see a new pitcher next uh, next inning. So Sam Lowe 0 for 2 tonight with a strikeout. He lines that ball into center field, but it's right at Del Castillo. Well, not right at him. It'll run a little bit. But FAU scores two runs in the inning. It's now 14-8, to and now we're going to head to the top of the six. We'll be right back here on YouTube. And we're back here on FAU Owl Radio, and sorry for the radio listeners if you're still uh, staying and waiting for us to come back. We went out with connection for a little bit. Wi-Fi is a little spotty out here. YouTube has remained on, so maybe to stay safe, you might want to switch over there. It's on uh, YouTube.com. You just go to the Strictly Sports Productions YouTube channel. It'll be right there as... Terrell takes a ball upstairs tonight. He's had a heck of a game. And he's had a grand slam and a two-run single tonight as he takes a strike one and one. And Brock Helverson on the mound for FAU. He has a 6.75 ERA on the season. And the 1-1. One, one. And that's a beautiful breaking pitch there. And it looked like some sort of uh, 
almost knuckle curve or screwball of some sort. But most guys don't throw screwballs anymore. But it had some sort of weird cut to it. Two one. And that fastball's in the dirt. CJ Uri is uh, getting us some food, so he'll be right back. And you don't want to fall 3-1 to this guy as that pitch is struck into left field. Hardigan running after it. And he'll dive, and he can't get that one. And it's going to be a leadoff double for Terrell. So what a night for him. Hardigan did the best he could. Had to run a ways for that, and he dove. Went off of his glove. So did the best he could there. So Gabe Rivera coming back up to the plate for Miami. So Raymond Gill at the plate for Miami. Nobody out, man on second. Foul ball. And that's a liner foul. And again, FAU, they got to make sure if they want any chance of coming back in this game, they got to stop Miami from scoring. So, what you want here is ultimately a pop up or a fly ball that does not advance the runner to third. Same thing with a ground ball or a strikeout. And that pitch is taken outside for a strike, 0 and 2. And Raymond Gill tonight, 1 for 3 with a ribby and a strikeout. And that pitch certainly was outside of the strike zone, but it was called a strike. Count 0-2 now as Gill takes time. And the 0-2. And that breaking pitch is taken up and in. The one, two, fastball swung on and missed. Strike three. And that's the first out here in the top of the sixth. So now Dominic Patelli coming back up. And on the night, excuse me, uh, Gabe Rivera at the plate. He's two for two. Two runs scored, two ribbies. Fourteen to eight here in the top of the sixth, and uh, we are back on FAUL Radio. CJ as he uh, comes back to sit down, but uh, what you missed, you missed a leadoff double. Uh, it was a diving attempt by Mitch Hardigan uh, towards the line in left field. He ran about twenty feet, but uh, you can't expect anyone to make that play. And Brock Elverson just got that strikeout, so it's now one out, top of the sixth for Gabe Rivera. He's had a heck of a night. And he takes a strike, and there's that. Uh, honestly, it looks like some sort of knuckle curveball. It's got that movement where it kind of almost slants as it comes in, and you can really only get that break on that type of pitch. That 0-1 is low and away. If it were a curveball, it would be a little bit more loopy. If it were a slider, it would be a little bit more uh, to the side, but this kind of has a bend to it and a late break, so it makes me think it's some sort of knuckle curve. But the count now one and one with one out. I'm not hearing you at all. Oh. Not at all. Yeah, we're still having technical issues here with Owl Radio. And we just got new technology, still trying to figure it out. And uh, we've had the idea maybe we try doing this on Skype instead or Zoom. But we'll see. Count two and one, and that hit him. So Gabe Rivera gets hit in the wrist, and no trainer out yet, but hey, it looks like he's fine. Get hit in the wrist, it's scary.
Tag Rivera still shaking off that really right hand over at first base. Uh, Warrior for the third base. Dugout saying we got ice on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Michael just pointed out to me that this runner on first base has batting gloves and base gloves. Oh, wait, no, no, no. Now he took them off. Oh, the hitter. Oh, geez. Wow. You know, he's got batting gloves and hitting gloves and, and uh, running gloves. The, the uh, shortstop to tell. He's 0 for 2 tonight with a strikeout. That 0 1 pitch swung on and missed 0 and 2 on the fastball. So one out, top of the sixth. Ground ball double play ends the inning. Vitelli, the left hand hitting shortstop, and the 0 2 comes in. Swing and a miss, strike three. Big strikeout there. Second strikeout on the night for Brock Helverson. And now only one more out. Massive strikeout there for Brock. Let's get this guy out. Let's get into the next inning. Unscathed here. And Jordan Lala tonight, two for four. Two singles, one of them an RBI single. And this is a guy, clearly, he's a first pitch swinger. So... Cannot give him a strike here, honestly. I, I would be pitching well, but then it goes off Tony's glove and both runners advance. So Brock Elverson may have had the same idea as I did, maybe go a little bit outside first pitch, but a little bit too much outside there. Still need to make that play for Tony there. If it's in your glove, it's in, you know, even if it's off the tip. Yeah, you're 100% right. He's definitely got to make that play, especially in this situation. 1 0, foul tipped. One one pop foul. Here we go. Big pitch here. One two two outs. Runners on second and third. Top of the six. 14 8 Miami. The pitch from Helverson. Oh. Swing and a miss. Strike three. And Helverson strikes out the side. Huge job getting out of that jam. We're going to the bottom of the six here on FAU awesome already. Awesome job by Brock. Awesome job by Brock. Three straight strikeouts to get out of that. Huge guts. Got to love it. Got to give the boys a little bit of a spark in that dugout going up to bat here. 100%. And that that uh, that aggressiveness, that spark, I agree with you. Point that out. So, bottom of the six. We'll be right back.
Bottom of the six, Jackson Wenstrom here to lead it off. He is 0 for 1 tonight with a sack fly. And it's nice to see FAU putting up these runs every few innings, but now is when you got to start making your stampede and, and, and trying to win this game because it's 14 to 8 and time is running out. So a new pitcher, by the way, in for Miami as Wenstrom swings and misses. Name is Jordan Dubberly, wearing number 53, right-handed pitcher. He is a sophomore. Yeah, Jordan Dubberly, eight earned run average on the season, remains winless. And that pitch lowing in, one and two. So a bright spot here for FAU is that, you know, even if they lose tonight, whatever, right? Uh, they still scored at least eight runs against a Miami team that's ranked. It's got to make you feel good as an offense. Wenstrom and kind of lunged at that one. Is that ball going to drop fair? Uh, no, we'll drop into the left fielder's glove instead. One out. Wilfredo up. Hopefully he gets us going here. But, yeah, absolutely. I will say we also didn't lay down. Eight runs. I mean, <laughs> oh, sorry for it, if anybody heard that profanity, but Jacob and I just bought food, and then the media department decided to tell us that the food's on its way. Oh, man. Well, we both just wasted about a waste of money. Dollars. Yeah. All righty. Well, I can do a second hot dog. How about you? I'll do a second. I'm doing do a second, second hot dog now. That's the least they could do for us. Yeah, that makes it feel more justifiable, $10, you know. Count one and one. <laughs> Unreal. Unreal. Alvarez, grounder right at Dubberley, oh, yeah, yeah. and he'll underhand it to first for the second out. Definitely some interesting song choices for the MLB, or the MLB, oh my gosh, the FAU lineup here. I almost want to hide this pretzel now that the food guy's coming up, you know? Big double play. That's good. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm not doing the burger. Pendleton, grounder to short. Oh, man, what a play. Oh, that was almost executed by the shortstop, Patelli. He just tried to do the Derek Jeter over there at shortstop. So, Shanuel takes a ball upstairs. And I forget if we were on audio for this, but uh, Patelli just tried to do the Derek Jeter at shortstop. Sometimes the pretzels just, just, just too much salt. 1 0, taken for a ball. Wow. By Shanuel, 2 0. We'll take that any of the week. I want to give a uh, healthy shout out to Steve Cashin, who might be making his way down here to Boca this weekend uh, to call some games with Jacob. Guy, definitely a legend down here. People know the name, so good to have him back. And uh, yeah, no, I'm I'm excited for those games. Steve and I did a bunch of them last year, and uh, it's good to have him in here. I haven't seen him in a while. Count now three and one to Shanuel. Naturally, we're going to have to – no one's going to need to hit a home run here. I'm sure he will. If he does, it's because of Steve. It's because we mentioned Steve. Yeah. Household name, Stephen Cashin. 
And Shannon will take a strike. That was your pitch. <laughs> yeah. The uh, the UM broadcaster said it best. Right down Main Street. He wait till the sixth inning. And Shanuel swings and misses at strike three to end the inning. So we're through six, 14 8 Miami. We'll be right back. So we're back here for the top of the seventh. FAU leading 14 to 8. Excuse, excuse me, Miami leading 14 to 8. As a new pitcher on the mound for FAU, Dylan O'Connell. And we were just kind of, kind of discussing this. When we saw him taking his warm up throws. Why are they taking Helverson out? I think the only reason would be, again, Marshall coming in this weekend, I guess. But the guy had, you know, he struck out the side. Got out of that inning, and now he's out of the game. So, Dylan O'Connell gets up 0-2 on VR. And Dylan O'Connell picks up a strikeout. He walked that one off too, a little swagger there. He did. Walked that one off the mound. Maybe a couple choice looks between him and the batter during the bat. <laughs> and hey, even as a pitching staff, it's a bright spot. The last four outs that you've had have been strikeouts. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. We could have used this in the first two innings. Um, but it's never too late. 
Never. First order to Bilar is a breaking ball strike right down Broadway. And second is a fastball that catches the outside of the strike zone for strike number two. Showing that's Yoni Morales in the batter's oh, box. And Ooh, Morales and checks, Morales check, did he go? Uh, didn't look like he went from where we are, but I'll be always looking for a lucky break here. 1-1. One, one. Yeah, 1-2, one actually. The scoreboard here takes some time. Count now 2-2. Two and two. And Morales had that super long at-bat. In his last at bat, when he skied to left field. Morales overall tonight is one for four with a strikeout. And the two two from O'Connell. Taken strike three. Five straight strikeouts for this FAU staff. Gorgeous pitch. And, you know, when you know a batter is like, damn. Is when they sit there in the box and like, and they lean back and they're just like, "That got me." Yep. No arguments to the umpire. You just walk it off. It is what it is. You got caught looking. So here's Adrian Del Castillo infield shifted on him, and O'Connell takes a strike. Wow. He is dialed in right now, and so yeah. is Helverson. So whatever's going on in the bullpen there to prepare these guys, we've made the adjustments. Absolutely. And that's a base hit to left. <laughs> that sort of stuff only happens in baseball, man. Say one thing and then boom. I'm just like the absolute worst luck for this team. <laughs> yeah, don't show up this weekend, CJ. I'm not. I'm not. I'll be at the spring game where FAU can't lose because they play themselves. Yes, sir. No. <laughs> we'll be going too. We're not uh, – that's another thing to say. We're not going to be broadcasting the doubleheader on Saturday against Marshall. We will be going to the spring game instead. Um, that's not a slight to the baseball team, but more of a need to get a first look at um, – need to get a first look at the football team and who's winning the QB battle. Exactly, exactly. And those will be the only two games we miss. We'll be in here for every single game, just not this Saturday. Count now 0 and 2 against Adrian Del Castillo. Grounded and through the right side for a base hit. So now both Del Castillos get on and it brings up Terrell, who is Mr. Grand Slam tonight. Runners on first and second, two outs, top of the seventh, 14 to eight, Miami. Lefty on lefty matchup here between Dylan O'Connell and Alex Terrell. And that pitch slider down low, one and oh. Count one and zero oh from Dylan O'Connell to Terrell, and the pitch coming in. Fastball nicely painted on the outside corner, and it's one and one. Count one and one, two outs. The pitch fouled straight back and hits the netting. Runners on first and second, two outs. Dylan O'Connell pitching to Alex Terrell. Pitch. And that pitch is way inside. And Terrell was forced to back off the plate there as that almost hit him. So now it's all twos on the scoreboard. Two and two, two outs. Two runners on. 14 to eight in the top of the seventh. Miami, 14 runs, 16 hits, and an error. FAU, eight runs, nine hits, and three errors. And the 2-2. Two -two. Foul back. Regionals preseason All American is one of America is one of the country's top power hitters. 
And I'm sure everyone's enjoying the infomercial that you're probably hearing on the background here on the microphone from the UN people. And that's strike three to end the inning from Dylan O'Connell. Another strikeout from him. And we're headed to the bottom of the seventh, 14 to 8 Miami. We'll be right back. And we're back. Bottom of the seventh, Bobby Morganson here to lead it off. Morganson, one for three, with two runs scored tonight. He had that base hit in his last at bat up the middle. Actually, that was two at bats ago. So they're shifting him again. And a strike pumped in there on the first pitch of the at bat, 0 1. Morganson with that calm approach at the plate. See how relaxed he is, just laying back and waiting. Yeah, he didn't like that call though there, and I I didn't like it either. I thought that was outside. Morganson reached first on an E6 in the second inning. He was brought home on a three-one blast. And the 0-2 from Dubberly, swinging yeah. a strike three, beautiful pitch. Yep, that was a great pitch, that, that one. Shouldn't have been the strikeout pitch, though, unfortunately. Thought that was an awful call on strike two by the ump. Is what it is. So Mitch Hardigan steps up here. And again, we talked about it earlier in the broadcast. At the very least, you want to see this team put up some runs. They have tonight. Offense looking alive, and... You know, preparing for this Marshall series, it's going to be important. That conference record determines a lot. you got to win your conference to get to Omaha, and that's what FAU is trying to do at this point. As the 0-1 comes in, he serves that out in the left center field gap, and the left fielder Rivera uh, Lala will make the catch for the second out, and it will bring up Nicholas Tony, who had that three-run shot earlier in the game. First pitch to Tony. Shallow fly to center field. Del Castillo will come under it. He'll make the play, and that'll end the inning. So we're through seven here at FAU Baseball Stadium. Miami maintains their lead. It's 14 to 8. We'll be right back.
So I was just uh, out for a little bit. So the uh, runner on se first and second, top of the eighth, and that's a ball lined right at Alvarez. And Michael made the observation here, uh, and he's right. You know, he was not focusing on catching the ball. The runner was so far off second base that he was looking at second base instead of looking at that ball going to his glove. So it went into the outfields. Now it's, that's another error, fourth error of the night for FAU. And Shanuel is playing really in. He was almost out at the pitcher's mound there. And, uh, you know, with Patelli at the plate, this is a guy hitting under 200 with one RBI. Probably a pretty smart play by FAU trying to expect the bunt there. So 2 0 on Patelli. And a new pitcher on the mound for FAU. It's Braden Ostrander, the freshman. And that pitch is called outside for a strike, 2 and 1. And that pitch was definitely outside. I think that was more of a makeup call for the last pitch. But the last pitch was definitely a strike. 2 1 show bunt again. That's a high strike. So, yeah, so two strikes there, and Miami's dugout is chirping after that call. Two and two, nobody out top eight, 14 to eight, Miami. Runners on first and second, Ostrander deals. And that pitch is fouled away. And, uh, you know, this is a game, uh, FAU losing by a lot. And Ostrander, a freshman, you're looking to get him reps against a really good offense here. Yeah, absolutely. The 2 2. And a curveball looped in for strike three, frozen. So Jordan Lala. Jordan Lala, the I feel like this guy's up every other every other hitter. Yeah, really. I mean, this is his sixth at bat now. He's two for five. Yeah, that's that's crazy. Well, and, so and you said earlier, Michael, at bat. if he's two for five right now, so actually, yeah, you're right. He's six. Five at bats in the sixth inning. Count zero and two to Lala. Pitch upstairs. Way upstairs for ball number one. Ostrander. He throws hard, so you know a double play is certainly something you want, but. Mm -hmm. High velocity here. Yeah, I, I like what he's been doing so far. I think that he's it's a nice change of pace pitcher here. Not a lot of guys in this FBU bullpen can throw it as fast as he can, as hard as he can. Quick release, quick motion. It's just something way different for the UM hitter to look at. So the count 0 and 2. Or scoreboard keeps changing. It's 0 and 1. 2 and Wow, yeah, scoreboard doesn't know what it's doing. Popped up in the infield, and that's infield fly rule. So, yeah, infield fly rule. It doesn't matter if he dropped it or not. It would have been an out. Um, so now it's runners on first and second with two outs, and it will bring up uh, Anthony Villar. And I've kept saying VR because uh, there's a player in the major leagues named Jonathan VR, but it has two L's. So I guess yeah. the one L is Villar. So this would be Villar. Right. You know VR. He was on the Marlins yeah, for a VR, little bit. Of course. So two outs here in the top of the eighth. Miami still leading 14 to 8. Braden Ostrander is taking the mound for the Owls. Checks back in second. First pitch delivery. And that pitch is upstairs. 1 0. So Ostrander, you know, not just does he throw hard, but he actually looks more confident right now than he did, you know, when there were no outs. Uh, and that's really good poise. For a freshman coming in in a, in a spot like this, the 1 0, 2 0. And, and that's something I've noticed too. Miami, you know, they haven't put on a run since the fourth inning. Um, and, and and really, what I've seen from this FAU pitching staff is they're being way more aggressive. They're, they're throwing pitches that aren't over the middle of the plate now. They're trying to spot corners, they're trying to get people swinging at pitches outside of the strike zone as that pitch has popped up again. B.J. Murray going after it right behind third base, 
and he'll make the play. Beautiful job by Brian Ostrander getting out of that jam. FAU is going to go to the bottom of the eighth now. They're down to the last six outs. they got to start getting it together here if they want to try and win this game. We'll be right back. DJ Murray here to lead off the bottom of the eighth. He had a double in his last at bat. He's one for two today with two RBIs. He's also walked and struck out tonight. And Dubberly still on the mound as he deals a strike right in there, 0 and 1. And again, like, you know, BJ Murray is a tremendous hitter, especially when he's hot. But his number one issue to me is just he looks at so many pitches. You know, right down Broadway, and and you know you got to swing at some. Yep. Yeah. There's been a bunch of times this season that I've seen BJ just kind of sit there, and we're all looking around like, where you know, what are you looking at? Because I know what I was looking at from the beginning of that. Um, I think he's kind of cut down a little bit on that, but there are still one at bat a game where you're like, really? Right. Really. And the O2 high ball there, one and two, and again, you know, I mean, some guys, it's just. Uh, it's a, it's again. It's great to have plate discipline, but not when you're looking for the perfect pitch, and then that perfect pitch comes, and you know you're not ready for it. So sometimes you get in your own head as a hitter when you're like, okay, I know I'm seeing the strike zone well, and then you're overthinking it, and then you get that pitch right down there, and, and it's a little frustrating. But again, BJ a tremendous hitter. The one two, swinging a miss at a pitch in the dirt, drops to one knee. One out here in the bottom of the eighth. And that was one where I would have hoped he would have looked at it. <laughs> yeah, right, right. <laughs> that one was pretty much barely crossed home plate. Filthy pitch, nonetheless. Yeah, Dubberly's done a nice job tonight. That's for sure. And his pitch count now at 25 through two and a third. Sam Lowe back up now. He's 0 for 3. Takes a strike and a little high. So statistics-wise... You would expect him to get on base here. You would think. But not swinging to that kind of stuff. Yeah, and you're right. I mean, statistically, you know, the hit would have him below his average for the season. And Lowe drives it right field. And Rivera will make the play two outs, and it will bring up Jackson Wenstrom. So if Wenstrom were to make an out here, um, FAU would have one, two, three in the ninth. FAU Owl strikes run out of time here against Hurricanes after splitting the lead And the first pitch from Dubberly to Wenstrom is swung on a missed. Big looping curveball there. 0 1. Hurricanes still need 14 8 with two outs here in the bottom of the eighth. Went from a lifetime 238 hitter at FAU, having started 29 of 31 games. The 0 1 pitch. And that's fouled off. Attacked out of play. Oh, and two, two outs. Wenstrom. Wow. Uh, got a lucky call there. Yeah, I don't know. 
He's been all over the all over the place with those outside pitches that have either cut the corner, or touched the corner, or whatever, however you want to call it. That one looked like it was clear strike three. The one two, swing and a miss, strike three, and that'll end the eighth. We're gonna go to the top in the ninth, fourteen to eight, Miami. We'll be right back. Well, we're going to have to win this game. Absolutely. <laughs> 14-8, top nine, Thomas Haggerty, the junior right-hander on the mound for FAU as he deals up high, 1-0, and Yohandi Morales and for Miami here. He's had better at-bats than what his night has shown tonight. He's one for five with two Ks. The 1-0. Foul tip to strike. So, in your opinion, where to for FAU from here? I mean, your big games of the season are already over for out of conference games. Your in state rival games are pretty much over as well. Uh, you have FA, FIU conference, but I think that FAU is always a little bit more focused on UF, uh, UM, and when they go play US, UCF and, and FSU. Uh, where would you say? is the owl's determination going forward i would say uh it's just you got to win the conference now and and you got to have good conference play um i think that's really the only pathway to omaha is winning that conference and that's got to be the focus and that ball's grounded to third and murray boots it as that ball bounced before it hit his glove and just uh not really the way you should be approaching that ground ball Look, I play baseball a little bit, but I know for a fact that the, you don't want to go up to it like that. And it was almost like he was just trying to make the out way too quick. If right. he would have paused and let it come to him, he still would have gunned him out. Uh, exactly. I have. I got to say, I am very disappointed in the infield play tonight from FAU. There's been tons of errors that have led to prolonging of innings, an error that led to a grand slam. The list goes on. This is the fifth error for FAU tonight. Haggerty deals to uh, Adrian Del Castillo. He's three for five with an RBI, singled in his last at bat. But yeah, I mean, you know, you got to focus on the conference because 
It's the only way to Omaha. Pop up. Third base side. Well, we we didn't win. We didn't win the conference last time around, uh, and we still went to regionals. True. True. So I don't think we need to win the conference for regionals, but but to go to regionals and not be a three seed and be a two seed uh, is probably you, you need to win the conference. Right. This team's going to regionals regardless. One one line to first, uh, and Shani will step on the bag. A very fast double play there, and heads up by Shanuel to touch first. So now the other brother, Christian Del Castillo, steps in here. And he's three for four with a double and a walk. Singled in his last at bat. And Haggerty deals a strike. And I got to say, the bullpen, ever since that, you know, those first few innings where things got out of control, they've been really good. I mean, if you go five through nine, not giving up any runs, that's a really big positive going into this weekend. Pitches outside. The other, the other thing that you could also say is a bit of a negative is that there was no runs in the, that span. We could yeah. really chipped away at this lead that they have. Maybe got a, three runs back and maybe got into the bottom of the ninth down only three. Yeah. Yeah, what could have been, what could have been. And, uh, you know, FAU beat Miami here 11-2 to last year. They lost 11-2, to I think, last week or a week and a half ago. And, you know, tonight just not looking too good. The 2-0 from Haggerty is a strike. I will say, though, to anybody that's tuning in now or is going to just look at the box score after the game, 14-8 to is going to look like, you know, it was a game at points, but it never really was. Uh, UM pulled away from this one really early. And Grounded to second, low, nice play, drops to a knee, throws to first in time to end the inning. Now, FAU, they're getting their last licks, bottom of the ninth. We'll be right back. Bottom of the ninth, Wilfredo Alvarez here to lead it off. Takes a strike from Dubberly. He's still in the game pitching his fourth inning. Alvarez one for four tonight. The 1 and Alvarez fouls it off. And, uh, we've had a great time here tonight, regardless how this game's gone. It's always great to have big teams come in here and – as the 0-2 comes in, and another foul. And the 0-2 into right field. It's going to bloop in for a base hit. That's how you start it if you're FAU. Yeah, Wilfredo Alvarez, he 
he began last year on a six game hitting streak, Al was facing the Owls with 15 walks. That was fourth highest among conference USA hitters, and only just able to loop one into right field to finally get an FAU base runner on here. Hopefully, the minor nerve gains can be healed out of this. Pendleton up now, takes a ball inside. He's one for four tonight. Singled in his last at bat. And the 1 0 to Pendleton. Swing and a miss. Hard hack there. So, what do you think of uh, Pendleton's DH debut? I mean, I like it. I like getting his bat in the lineup, even though you're one for four, you know, it, you know happens you know you, you go one for four every once in a while it's not the bad thing but he brings a presence in there diving play by the third baseman throw to second not in time and it goes into right field alvarez will go to third so now it'll be runners on the corners with nobody out after the third baseman morales tried to make a big play and ends up going the wrong way yeah and now you have nolan chanuel up here and he's been on every pitch tonight. Yeah. So you got something happening here to make it somewhat interesting in terms of the score. Uh, Bobby's coming up after that, so just don't get out. Keep the bats going and give yourself a chance here. And there is movement in that Miami bullpen, but, you know, Bubberly might be getting a little fatigued here, fourth inning, and got to take advantage of it. And Victor Castillo in as a pinch runner. And that's a smart play there. Caleb Pendleton, a catcher. Not catchers not usually known for their speed. So Shanuel tonight, two for four, had that home run in the third as he fouls that ball off. And Shanuel serves it into center field. It's most likely going to be a sack fly as Del Castillo catches it in center. A run scores. That's another RBI for Nolan Shanuel, and now it's 14 to 9. So now Bobby Morganson steps in. So Morganson steps in here with one out man on first and takes a pitch low and in. The count one to no. And Morganson takes it low and in two and up. Bubberly deals the 2 0. And a strike. Desperately need to extend the inning here. And you got that whole left side open. But with the way that Bobby stands. Yeah, I don't see it going there. Yeah. Three and one, but he'll take a walk. And again, if you're FAU, don't beat yourself up about this loss. If, if, it, if, it, if, it, if it does end up being a loss and the count now runs full, you know, you almost put up a 10 spot. They might even put up a 10 spot. And, you know, that's a good night offensively against a top 25 team and usually a top 10 team in Miami. The 3 2, and that is nub foul. Full count, one out, man on first. Bottom of the ninth, 14 9. Morganson drives it, center field. Del Castillo will get under it for the second out as Castillo tags back to first base and he'll bring up Mitch Hardigan. And he will be the final hope for FAU tonight unless he can get on base. 
500 with 400 right before the morning crash. Nonetheless, he gets another out. Hardigan tonight, one for three with an RBI, two runs scored. And Hardigan fouls it away. The 0 1. Pop foul again, almost the same spot. So now FAU down to their final strike. Man on first. 14 runs, 17 hits, two errors for Miami. Nine runs, 11 hits, five errors for FAU. The 0 2. And that's up high, and it's going to get past the catcher Del Castillo, and Castillo will advance to second. A lot of Castillos flying around tonight. And hard again. That's blooped into left and caught by Jordan Lala. That'll do it. FAU put up a fight, but they end up losing tonight 14 to 9. The next game that we will have for you will be on Friday night at 6 30 p.m. Steve Cashin and I will be calling that game between Marshall and FAU. For CJ Uri, I am Jacob Brown, and we'll see you on Friday night. Thank you, everyone, for listening tonight. Well, dude, this is what dude. It is.